Hey there, it's Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is time for another episode of It's a Lawn Fawn Christmas. This is episode five and I'm using the Magic Iris camera add-on to make today's card. This is a six by six card. So my background panel actually measures five and three fourths by five and three fourths. I have taped the new Snowflake background stencil to this panel. It's um, one of two of the stencils in this set and I'm applying this white paste. It's the white stencil paste and it is amazing. Look how you can see no red through that. Now, once it was dry, I brought out the second stencil, layered that on, and I'm gonna tape it down really good because my paper is actually a little bit warped from the first stenciling. So I'm gonna hold that down with a lot of tape and then go ahead and apply the second layer. And I'm doing this first so it can dry and then I can work on the other parts of my card. But oh my gosh, I was so impressed with this new stencil paste. Love the white. Okay. I needed a panel now for my camera that I'm gonna die cut my camera from. I wanted it to kind of look like a, um, maybe the sky with a little bit of snow in it, just kind of different than my background. So I brought in my Distress Oxide Salvage Patina cause it's my favorite. And then I have the Snowfall stencil and I'm gonna do some tone on tone stenciling. So making the areas that I'm stenciling a little bit darker than my background is going to make it really subtle, but still cute. Isn't that cute? <laughs> okay, we do need a little bit of sparkle there, don't you think? So I have my liquid stardust. Now mine's really low, so I've just added a little water to it. Then I can dip my paintbrush in it and splatter it just like that. I like to use a window sheet too to get the really fine splatter and this looks great. That's only gonna take a minute to dry and then I can die cut out my camera. It's so cool, I love this die. And I have the bottom piece and the center piece that I die cut. Also, this is just white cardstock where I'm gonna build my scene. This piece is from the Let It Shine 6x6 paper pad. And this I can go ahead and glue on, it's ready to go. It's a little bit bigger than what I needed, but it doesn't matter, I cut it from a scrap and the top half of it will be covered by that white piece which will hold my scene. I'm just gonna lay it in place for reference and then add on the other cute elements to this camera. I love that it has these little details because that really makes it stand out as a unique piece, you know? Um, also, I have, I will change out the, the top of that button. I'm gonna change that to white later because I have a red background. Yeah, sometimes you have to do that, right? You have to change things up, but it's all fun card making. It's part of the process and I don't mind at all. Okay, here are the stamp sets I'm using. This is the Winter Village set. I'm also using Tiny Gingerbread, one of my all-time favorites. <laughs> and then I have these Snow Globe Scene stamps. I'm gonna use the Gingerbread Image. And then Sweet Christmas, an oldie but a goodie. So a ton of images today. I'm gonna show you some Copic coloring and how I did this. Um, very simple today. E18 for the roof of my house. E15 for the rest of the house, and then just a touch of red on the door. I want this to look like gingerbread houses. So I'm gonna leave some white there where I would normally color things in. And the magic happens when I add the white gel pen accents. So a lot of squiggly lines, scalloped lines and dots and a little heart on the red door. So cool. I colored all of the houses exactly the same. Very easy coloring, not too hard at all. For the trees, I am using G28 as my darkest color and then G19 as my lightest color. Again, very easy coloring. This card was, as you might be able to tell, somewhat involved. So I did not want the coloring to take me forever. So that's why I kept it simple today and I think it works. So there's the trees. See the white gel pen just really gives it that extra something. And then I have quite a few gumdrops. I'm going to do four of them red and four of them white because I kind of have a candy cane gingerbread thing going on in this card. And then of course, white gel pen accents for my gumdrops are amazing. And you can see what they look like up close right there. 
Here are all the images colored and cut out. I only used E15 for my gingerbread men. The E13 was for the sticks of my lollipops. And now I'm gonna glue all the things down on that white panel that's the center of my camera, just gluing everything down flat. I left it just like this because I wasn't sure where I wanted to put the gingerbread men just yet. And now I can glue that in place and sad in my heart, it's a little bit crooked. I'm gonna let that go. Okay, here's a very quick how-to on putting together the magic iris. We will also get to the what not to do in a moment. But first you put your sausage pieces into the ring that you die cut with the gear piece, as I call it. Then you're gonna add glue dots, mini glue dots, to the X's on those sausage pieces. I also call them balloon pieces. <laughs> and then add a second ring. Then you're gonna flip it over and you're going to add adhesive where those little indicator notches are and that's where you're going to put the stabilizing arms on this you need three of everything three rings three sausages three stabilizing arms and then these are going to get lined up with that inner ring this is what's going to hold your magic iris together so make sure you press those down really good and use a strong adhesive once those are in place, we're going to flip it over and work on the front side. We're going to add the arm. Now, this arm is die cut with the camera set because when you do magic iris behind the camera, you need a longer arm that, or handle. We'll call this the handle. I actually ended up doubling this handle up, adding two of these just to make it a little bit stronger. Um, I might have had to redo my magic iris and uh, it was very upsetting. All right, so now you add your third ring to the top of that and use these arms to hold it in place. So put some adhesive down, make sure you don't get too close to the ring and fold these over and they should not be on there tight because you need room for the magic iris to move. So when you fold them in, they won't go all the way to the center. If you want a really more in-depth tutorial on this, Lawn Fawn has it on their website when you search for magic iris. You'll find the video right there. All right, so there it is. Now we are adding this piece, which is the arrow piece, also from the camera add-on. The magic iris comes with it with its own, but you need it longer for the camera. All right, when you add it to the back of your camera, we're working on the front side here of the magic iris, gluing that to the back of the camera so the handle is in that upper right corner of the camera. And there you can see, open, close, love it. Okay, now the background was a little flimsy because, or warped because of all the paste. So I'm just gluing on a second cardstock piece that was a hair smaller to the back to help flatten that out, keep it nice and sturdy. And then I just put some heavy acrylic blocks for stamping on the back of that while I added my little gingerbread scene right to this circle, which, this is problem number one with my card. That little circle piece is gonna add a little too much dimension for my magic iris. But let's go through the steps of this and then we'll talk about where I went wrong. Okay, we're only gonna put adhesive on the back of the stabilizer arms and on the side of the camera that does not have the handle. Don't put any adhesive on the side of the camera where the handle goes up and down, okay? I added double foam squares on that side of the camera that doesn't have the handle and only adhesive on the back of those stabilizing arms. Now with the magic iris open, I can put my little guy in the center. That didn't go well. I heard you can slide it in from the side. That did not go well because I actually got glue on my magic iris and it glued it open. That's why I had to redo it, redo the whole thing. I hope you're sad for me because it was very stressful. <laughs> okay, so this is my fix, so to speak. I traced my magic iris circle. By the way, it's about three and three fourths of an inch, so you could totally use a circle die here. And then I glued my little scene to the center of that. Now to raise up my magic iris so that the opening and closing parts don't touch my little gingerbread men, I added a strip of cardstock to the back of those stabilizing arms. You can see how I had to kind of rip that off my card. Oh, mercy. All right, so now I can glue those down just by putting glue on the back of the stabilizing arms and glue it to that circle. And then I glue the circle right to my card. So this worked out 
really good, even though I did have to redo the magic iris. Yeah, this that was sad. <laughs> Okay, now I need a little bit of like a snowy hill for the bottom of my card. So it looks like my camera's sitting in the snow. And I just did salvage patina and a little bit of water to give that a little interest. It's a lot of it's going to be covered up. So once that was dry, I'm using the stitched wavy borders and cutting out a little hill, just using my card for reference on where to cut that. I did use double foam squares to mount this to the bottom of my card, and then I can just flip it over and cut off any that hangs off the edge. And now we can add all of our cute pieces. So I added two gingerbread people to the scene of the village and then I'm going to add the candy canes, the lollipops, the gumdrops, and a couple more gingerbread pieces to the bottom where the snow is. I really liked the red and white alternating gumdrops there and then I have the little gingerbread cookie tree and gingerbread man right there in the center. Isn't it precious? I love it. Okay, here's where I added the white part to the button of the camera, and then I used double foam squares to pop up a little gingerbread man standing on that. I thought it was really cute. And then for my sentiment, I'm using my Oliver's Stitched ABCs. I die cut out the word smile from some green cardstock, and then I'm going to stamp It's Christmas from my Yeti stamp set. And I'm doing that with Versamark ink and white embossing powder, heating that up to melt that powder. And then my sentiment says, smile, it's Christmas. And I flagged at the end of this and then I can glue everything in place. Now I wanted my smile to stand out even more. So I die cut these letters from white also and I'm gonna give them a little bit of a white drop shadow. I'll glue that glue one of those to the back of each letter and then we can glue those down to our card and I found liquid glue to be the best for the letters because we are gluing on top of that very textured background that has the paste on it so gluing those in place using my tweezers glue also gives me time to wiggle things around to get it straight to get it evenly spaced so I love liquid glue it's my go-to adhesive almost all the time. All right, then once those are down, I added the banner that says it's Christmas with a little bit of cardstock on the back because the letters are raised up a little bit from the white shadow, so I wanted that to be raised up too. Here's my six by 12 inch card base scored at six inches, so I have a six by six card. Now I am adding some diamond stickles to this card. This, by the way, this is the card that never ends. It goes on and on, my friend. I started making it not knowing what it was, and I'll continue making it forever because this is the card that never ends. <laughs> You'll see. It's going to make another appearance. I think I'm done with it right here, but no, you wait. It keeps coming back for more. I added this half-eaten gingerbread man to the inside because he's not smiling and the outside says smile. So I thought it best that he go on the inside. You know, I'd be upset too if somebody took a bite of me. So here we go. Magic Iris working. I'm so happy. And it did catch on the edge of my gingerbread scene on the inside a little bit. I had to flatten that out. Now we're going to make a coordinating ornament. This is a little wreath I had on hand. You can find these in everywhere right now in all the crafty places, you know, and I'm using some glue and a paintbrush to smoosh the glue down in to my wreath. And I am adding this brand new product I'm so excited about, Flock with Glitter. This is Sparkling Cottontail from Pink and Main. I'm just going to sprinkle it on there like it snowed. And then I'll use my finger to kind of press it in place and it'll stick to wherever the glue is. It's kind of like glitter, but look at that. Mm, it's fabulous. It's really cool. Um, I wasn't sure how this is going to work out, but I'm like, I have to try for the people to so they can see how this is going to work. And it's awesome. It's completely awesome. I love it. You can also get this flock without the glitter and in like, I don't know, a hundred colors. Maybe not a hundred, but you know, I like to exaggerate for a dramatic effect sometimes. Okay, I'm adding some red and white twine to hang this up because it will be an ornament. And then we're going to add some cute stamped images. I had to stamp more and color more images for this little wreath. 
<laughs> but it was worth it. I'm going to hot glue everything in place. This was probably the hardest part. Like everything just wanted to wiggle around on the wreath, but it worked out in the end. And if they're not perfectly straight, it's kind of whimsical. I think it's a cute little scene. So I have my lollipop, a candy cane, some gumdrops. I thought I was going to do red and white, but since they're not by each other, I decided I was going to re, I was going to color the second one. So I had two red ones. And yeah, now this is my theory. If you have an idea when you are making something, you should do it. <laughs> so this is my idea. I'm going to cover everything on this ornament with this glaze, and then I'm going to sprinkle on some chunky glitter. It's an ornament, right? So it can have that kind of um, over-the-top glittery look to it, right? So here I am sprinkling on that chunky glitter, it, it's really hard to for me to refrain from just like dumping it on there. You still want to be able to see like the gingerbread man and the gingerbread girl and all the details, but oh, I love it. I love it. It's so cool. Okay, we're going to add a bow to the top of our wreath. I have this ribbon in my stash. It might still be available at Spellbinders. It has glitter in the ribbon. I don't know how they did it, but it's magical and it goes perfectly with all the sparkliness of my wreath. Because remember, my flock had glitter in it. Now my images have glitter on them. <laughs> so why not glitter on the ribbon or in the ribbon? So just a little hot glue to press that into place. And my ornament just needs to dry and it's ready to go. But oh my word, the flocking is so fun. I love it. So here are the two things. As I was setting them out to show you, I was like, oh, what if I added a little snowfall to the top of the camera? See how this card never ends? So I added that. It's super cute. I'm so glad I did it. And then I was like, but you know, what if I put the glaze on the letters to make them stand out even more? Yeah, I'm going to do that. So I did that. But you know, if you're going to put the glaze on them, then you might as well sprinkle some glitter on there. Why not? So I did that and that was amazing. But you know, I had already used the diamond stickles on the other parts of the card. So I needed to add that to the snowfall on top of the camera. Yeah. So now I think I'm done. I'm going to show you all the things. Look how fun this is. Oh my gosh. I decided I needed a little glaze right there in that circle part of the camera. So I did that. And then I walked away. I'm pretty sure I'm done. Oh, this card. Wow. It was a ton of fun to make. It was a ton of time. I This one was labor intensive, especially because I had to redo the magic iris. But you know what? I love card making. And so when I'm having fun, I just, I don't mind spending the time putting in the love to my card. So thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you've enjoyed this Lawn Fawn Christmas series. I will be back again next month with a new series. It's not going to be a stamp set of the month, but it will be a series. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully every Tuesday in December, or at least the first three December, Decembers, the first three Tuesdays in December. I've been talking a long time. I bet you're ready to click off. If you're still here, love ya. And I will see you on the next video. Happy stamping. Bye.